Grinders, it's your boy Pokemon back on the grind, back with the bankroll challenge from $25,000 to $100,000. Once again, I'm going to start off with a quick highlight from some tournaments, and then if we could place a spin or two for you, I will. Um, quick recap for what this is table one on the left, where heads up is why I'm showing this, it's the $100 brawl. Um, it's a bounty tournament, it's a week, uh, every night they have it. Um, so we're, we're heads up here against a, a, a good opponent. On table two on the right is the Thursday Thriller, is a $200 buy-in, and we're down to five people or so. Um, I don't know how good the quality is, but I figured I'd show you a quick heads-up match here in Connor Ramblarn. Um, we played pretty fast. Um, it's a six-minute video here. Um, I just remember, I haven't actually watched too much of this. Um, I just remember I thought I played a uh, pretty good heads-up here. Took some aggressive lines, but... Uh, it worked out for us so let's let's concentrate more on table one i think table two finishes kind of fast um and then i'll show you the bankroll total of what we're at and uh, we'll go from there i have a new microphone and a new camera so i haven't actually done testing or anything like that so i'm hoping uh the first video is okay but uh i will fix it over time if it's not doing Sanders Seabat on table one here. Um, I knew he was a very aggressive opponent, so I wanted to try to exploit that, but I was being aggressive myself. Here is a hand, ace-queen suited, heads up. I'm definitely gonna go for a three bet. He folded. Ace-queen, we're getting the cards. He goes for a three bet, and I decided to do a four bet. We're really deep stacked, so definitely have some chips to play with. Low cards, we're both going to miss that. He's going to have some uh, pocket pairs he's going to float with here. Uh, I'm going to represent more of a top of my range, aces and kings and stuff like that. He decides to check raises here. I wasn't having it, guys, and I jammed over top of him, putting him to the test, and he folds. So that gives us a really big chip lead. We have a chance for a bounty on table two for $100. Pocket threes versus ace queen, and we get a three. So we're winning a bounty on table two. Love to see it hundred dollars in the account if you don't know what a bounty is is uh you start the tournament off with the price over your head and as you knock out more people your bounty gets bigger and bigger so the time you get to these final tables the bounties can get pretty juicy depending on your buy-in we get some value out of top pair on table one it's going to answer a message Uh, we get two pairs, so we're definitely getting cards. <laughs> it's funny, in the moment, I don't, I didn't remember I was hitting, hitting all this stuff. I just felt like I was playing good, but looking back, uh, we are getting a lot of hands to, make, to obviously take aggressive lines. Okay. Uh, Queen Jack are uh, raising from... Uh, the button here on table two um, We decided to just flat. This is where I don't know enough about ICMs how much I should be uh, Getting out of the way of this stuff. I think it's an okay hand uh, now now this guy just punishes me for for limping in here um, I'm curious what like top players would do there. I feel like Queen Jack is you know too too um, Too good to fold, but I'm actually not positive when it comes to ICM into the chip leader there um, he should be putting so much pressure on us all the time there. Um, I'm wondering if I'm with my blockers, if I'm better at just 3-betting or folding. Like, I, I don't know if calling's the best line there. Me and this guy were chatting on table 1. I spelt wrong. I told him I was, I was on the Thursday Thriller, but I didn't even spell it right, so I think I confused the guy. Okay, so we have a commanding chip lead here. Uh, I do remember this hand. So we have 5 7 suited. We call the 3 bet. We get the open end here. We're not going anywhere. Obviously, we'd love to have a spade in our hand, but we do not. Um, but don't forget, he's he's raising us pre. A spade is a scare card for him. So look at this board here. He checked into us, guys. He, th he 3 bet us. Check turn, check river. I have complete no showdown value. Uh, you can try to put him on a range here, but I figured he can't call me here unless he wants to do a hero call with a, a weak ace. So I decided to put his tournament life on the line. I have a lot of 
Um, I even full houses in my range. I have flushes in my range. Uh, I have uh, the eights. I have kind of everything here. So um, more or less, don't know if he would lay down ace high, um, but the fact that he checked turn, checked river, um, no, no blocker bet or anything like that, um, I decided to put pressure on him. Um, I even showed him the bluff because uh, there was eight people or so watching. Um, it says on the on the top here, there's eyeballs. I had some people watching the stuff. So um, I was like, why not? I don't play this guy too often. He doesn't usually play the higher binds. I don't bump into him too often. Um, but he is a good player. Um, so we get away with that one. We're down to three people on the $200 buy-in. Um, Ace-Jack, we're definitely calling there. We have to win a flip. Um, do we get there? We do not. So we're out in third place in the Thriller. It's a decent uh, payout. But I actually did two buy-ins. So we spent $400 just to show you that. So it says 900, uh, it was about $1,000, so 600 profit. Um, now we can concentrate on the heads up match. It goes pretty fast here. Second, we got to um, my other table is finished. You'll see my speed really pick up. It's one thing I wanted to touch on. So many people um, try to find timing tails when you're playing people. You have no idea what someone's doing behind a computer, how many tables, how many sites. Uh, if they get a phone call, like a million things can happen. And people think when you're tanking or fast, uh, um, there definitely is timing tells, but I think sometimes put, people put way too much weight on it because um, you, you just don't know what someone's doing. Sometimes if you're if you're streaming, you're answering chat, you're, or if I'm making a video, I'm breaking down hands. So guys, we went for the hero call there. I was actually talking very, during the last hand here. I'll break, but go back a little bit here. It was very aggressive. Um, we'll just watch the very last hand. So I have 310. I go for a limp um, with my chip stack here. I'm going to play every single hand in position. We had a massive chip lead. We flop uh, bottom pair. He he bets. We snap call. That four is not good for him. Um, we call him right off the bat. And then he just jams. So what I'm thinking there, let's just pause and look at that. Obviously, sometimes, yes, he could have 5-4. He could have his beat. But if he has a 5, he's not happy to see the 4. Um, or the jack, um, he's going to have some miss, miss straight draws, flush draws, but any of his strong hands, besides trips, he's not going for value town. If he has a five here, um, an over pocket pair, eights, nines, tens, anything like that, he's not happy to me calling him down. There's straight combinations, there's full host combinations, there's trip combinations. So me calling here, snap calling with bottom pair, looks maybe kind of fishy, but um, I figured there was too many combinations that um, aren't good for him and only a couple that were good for him so uh, even though i was playing ultra fast um, i was thinking uh, about all these type of things and we take down ourselves another tournament guys so i don't know how long we can keep calling ourselves a spin and go player when each week we win tournaments and if you looked at my volume in tournaments i don't play that many so we have crazy good results um two thousand uh, dollars in profit there um one out of 100 people so we're gonna close that um, I wanted to show you guys the total, like always, oh, of course I didn't log in. Um, so I'm not going to log in because I don't know how to hide my information. You guys are going to have to take me for my word. We're at 11,700 on GG. I'm 100%. I just looked at all this not too long ago. Um, so if you take me by my word, I will do this. Um, I would rather not log in on camera and I don't want to make a second video. So we have 60,705 plus... 11,700. I'm very confident in that because I literally just looked at all this. So guys, we are at $72,400. So if you just want to subtract from a 100 grand, we have 28,000 to go in change. Uh, even closer, under 28,000. So we're on really good pace here. Um, I will try to play one spin for you guys go because that message I just got, um, I have something I would like to do. Um, the hundreds never get going for you guys, but I will open up the hundreds and we'll work our way down and we'll see if we can get a game going. Here, I'll close this in case it speeds up anything. Just seemed awfully slow. So I'll open a hundred. If that goes, we'll play a hundred. If the fifties goes, we'll play fifty. If the twenty fives, we'll just keep working our way down. Everything seems ultra slow here. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we have a hundred open. 50 is open, not playing. We'll go down to the 25. So you micro grinders might get your wish. We'll go to the 10. And this is when, when I tell you guys, um, 
I'm not playing spins and I'm jumping in tournaments because when I want to grind, I can't. So we have five stakes open and we're going to open up another one, $2 spin. Um, it's been a long time since I did one of those. <laughs> Guys, this is, I'm just going to keep going. So we have opened up almost the entire, let's see what's going, something's going. All right, so we're playing a $2 spin, unless something else opens here. You micro grinders are going to see, can a high stakes spin and go player come down to the $2 and um, dominate? Um, right off the bat, we're going to just label this guy a newer player to teach you some of my, I don't usually tell you what my tags are, but um, unless he is doing some high level level stuff which is rare at a two dollar stake we're gonna assume he is a new player and we are flopping the goods how do we get value out of these newbies we'll find out we're gonna try to see if they can hang themselves he shouldn't have too many sixes in his limpering range but uh, i don't think these new players think of stuff like that they probably just want to see really really cheap flops um, we don't want to lose any customers here but we do want to build up the pot so i'm going to go for uh, a third pot here Get some fives, some twos, some spades, some draws, some ace highs, king highs. Um, these players sometimes don't like to fold. If they raise, we're going nowhere. Obviously, sometimes you'll be beat, but we like our hand so far. And we take it down. Um, I'm actually gonna, I would never usually raise this. So this is one thing I wanna explain to you guys in videos. Um, this is actually not the best flop to continuation bet, but I'm just gonna use position and, and betting here and see if we can get away with some stuff here. Um, sometimes when you guys watch videos and you see me like jam or not jam hands that I'm supposed to jam or, or vice versa, um, what you might not be thinking at times, and I did it in my last video, there's a couple spots that I, I rewatched it, that they are a jam um, if you're playing top people, but there's certain lines um, you don't have to take when you're, I, I adjust my ranges based on who I'm playing. So if I'm playing re regs, um, some regs I jam wider, more optimal, some I go tighter, um, but a lot of the newer players, um, if I have a skill edge, I don't have to take um, some high variance lines, so um, it really does depend on your opponents. Um, I don't know if it's the best way to play, but that's what works for me. I constantly adjust my ranges um, based on who I'm playing, what I've seen, obviously, and then obviously you're going to be balanced at times, you're going to be mixing up those spots, so there's tons of hands here that you'll see me sometimes do the exact opposite so here's an interesting card um, I would love to get him off this but I don't think he's going anywhere um, but I just wanted to put some food for thought there when you guys are just kind of watching certain hands you're better off seeing someone play a large sample size to learn some of their ranges and, and you'll see how people adapt but I, I play definitely um, pretty pretty different depending on who I'm playing uh, if he's going to limp, we're going to see a flop for that. We got top pair, but you never want to lead out here. If we were stronger, I think, about leading out or, or a draw combination, jack, queen, seven, nine. Now we will build it up, just min bet. Tens or eights aren't going to fold, uh, even uh, jack, uh, ace or something like that. So how do we get value here? We're going to build it up. Let's see, a ten or eight should still call us here. I don't think he's got a king. I think we would have felt that before that. Might have been greedy going for three, but um, I didn't think there was enough scare cards to that I thought um, a ten or queen would still call you. Here, I don't need to risk too much. I could just lead out and bet, min. And then, depending on what he, if he just calls here, we're going to size this right up. Even though a three is actually a really bad card to bluff with, I'm actually still going to stick to a plan here. And this is just because it's a $2 spin. Um, it is usually paired boards. Um, if I had an ace, I'd be checking that three every time. Um, him calling, floating that flop, he definitely has threes in his range, I don't. Um, but this is just me kind of bullying around um, a $2 player and letting him know who the boss is. We're gonna lead out with our middle pair. I don't think he's ever checking a 10. So it's a bit of value. Uh, also just taking down the pot. Here, I'm going to get out of here. We have a commanding chip lead here. And these are things, when people are playing really, really fast, you'd be amazed how much you're actually processing what stacks you're looking at. Um, it doesn't look like when someone's playing fast, all the things are factoring, but um, 
you know, playing, you know, millions of hands. This this here shows I've played uh, over 2.5 million hands just on this site. Uh, I've played other sites. I used to play speed chess for, for a long time. Um, my 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 strength is I can think fast, but uh, I cap out. So I could think within one second. Some players could wait a minute and get to higher levels of strategy. My max brain, uh, if I wait 10 more seconds, I don't know how much smarter I'm getting. So I could think fast, but uh, I have a ceiling with how, how much I can how much I can go. So if you're playing like a Magnus in chess, if he waits for eight hours and thinks of, of a move, he can think of a better move. If I wait for eight hours, uh, within that first five seconds, it's going to be very rare I'm going to come up with a better better move. Um, here, guys, this is just, you see how I'm going to do this last video? He's just not calling me here. So we're just going to steal this. Now, that type of bet here, um, I wasn't even paying attention, just knew he wasn't going to call us. Um, with my high stake players who do watch these videos and stuff like that, I definitely do stuff when I'm totally nutted and uh, spots where I think I can get value by betting over pot. Here, um, I don't like my kicker, but once again, I don't think they're going to call me too often there. So, um, this guy here is going to get this tag, and we're just going to rate two dollar spin I don't think we'll bump these guys too often but let's say they win a satellite uh, to a tournament and I'm somehow at a final table at a higher stake with one of them um, this will kind of let me know um, in general I could usually put a lot of pressure on these guys the money might mean more to them in big spots so if I bump these guys at a five dollar spin and then all of a sudden it's like a five hundred dollar spin and go um, without looking them up and all that, um, there's a good chance I could put a, a lot of pressure on them uh, and, and the money might be more valuable with them. They might not have as much in their account. Um, there's obviously going to be exceptions to that, but it's just kind of like a general general guideline and then you base it on their play. But everything we've seen so far, these guys are doing exactly what they're doing. They're playing the stakes they probably should be playing. Um, they're learning how to play. They're filling out the game. Maybe as they get experience and some wins, they'll slowly take some shots up. Um, you know, I don't. Bump, I've never bumped these these players, as far as I know, and uh, it makes sense. I don't play two dollar spins. Um, we're this is one of the hands I am going to lead out, guys. I have top pair, I have backdoor draws, uh, and I I want to just take it down here. And there's going to be a lot of scare cards. Um, I could probably just ship it, but I don't know how bad I want to lose them. I feel like he's going to call us. So we have there. That's I don't think he has too many queens in his range, but we're just we're just going to go for the goods. I think we're gonna get a double knockout here. We do, guys. We get the double knockout. So the two dollars in the account were two dollars richer. Um, ran pretty hot, but as you can see, as much as I ran hot, um, I did show you some ways to exploit some of the newer players. So, guys, I hope you liked the video. This uh, update on the bankroll. I uh, hope the new camera and audio was good. I will see you on the next video. Peace.